Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about the next stimulus payment and my predictions as to what might happen there. And we have some really exciting news regarding the Paycheck Protection Program. Both the House and the Senate have plans to alter some of the PPP rules that will really benefit small business owners. Each plan is slightly different, so I'm going to go over each. And before I get into it, I just wanted to give a huge thank you to everyone that watches and subscribes. Today we passed 80,000 subscribers. That's amazing. The town I grew up in has 2,000 people in it. When I put that in perspective, it's so crazy. I seriously wake up every morning excited just to like make more content and teach you all what I find and I really appreciate each and every one of you. So let's move on to the bulk of this video. In next stimulus check news, I want to talk a little bit about my predictions based on what I'm reading every single day and I believe the odds of another direct stimulus payment are going up and up every single week. About three to four weeks ago, I would have probably put it at like a 25% chance that there'd be another stimulus payment. This is when many Republicans were saying no way to another payment and even Democrats were saying, eh, we've kind of shifted our focus to other issues. Then over the past few weeks, we've seen more people on board, including the chairman of the Fed, Trump and his administration, and of course the House majority, I mean, they voted in that HEROES package that included an additional stimulus payment. So this brings us to now, where I would give it probably like a 65 to 75, maybe 80% chance that we'll see another direct stimulus payment. I believe that it'll probably be identical to the first round of payments with, let's layer on top of that, another 50% chance that the next stimulus will also have something for adult dependents or people who have adult dependents, some form of uh, relief there. I think probably a 50% chance we'll see a change there. So when do I think we'll actually see these payments? I think we'll see another package, including a direct stimulus between the 22nd of June and the 2nd of July. This would give legislators nearly a month in session after this current break that they're on to debate the package, you know, mull over problems, collect any data that they're looking for from the original CARES Act, and then make an informed decision before the 4th of July recess. And it's really important to note that it is an election year and both parties know that people love the idea of a direct stimulus on both sides, both Democrats and Republicans. Elected officials know that this is gonna be a huge selling point come election time. All right, that's enough on the direct stimulus payment. Let's get into the paycheck protection news and go over both of the proposals. The first proposal is from the House and it would make a few really important changes for small businesses. The first one would extend that current eight week period during which businesses must use the funds to have loans forgiven. They would extend that from eight weeks to 24 weeks or to December 31st, whichever comes sooner. Now this is probably the biggest change proposed and there's a similar one in the other package. This would alleviate a massive issue with this program where many businesses who haven't even reopened are forced to return their loan because they have nothing to spend it on. They're not going to be open for the next eight weeks. Because so many businesses have returned their paycheck protection loans, the total amount of paycheck protection funding has actually gone down in the last couple of weeks. The total net amount sent to businesses despite 85,000 new loans being approved in that same period. These are all businesses that could have used the funding and potentially could have saved jobs, saved their businesses, but now have no source of funding because of that eight week period. So I really hope to see a change made there. The second change would let businesses repay loans over five years instead of two. Currently the terms are two years with a 1% interest rate. I don't believe this is really life changing for most businesses, However, it certainly will help out some who have, especially relatively high loans, you know, maybe businesses with really high payrolls and who might have extremely low revenues over the next few years. That would be the people who would benefit most from this, but that's not the biggest change. Third, the House wants to do away with the rule that no more than 25% of proceeds can be spent on expenses. Now this one is huge. This would be 
just a massive change. Right now, 75% of the loan that is forgiven must be spent on payroll, and the rest can be spent on things like rent or utilities. However, many businesses have issues like they might have really high rents but relatively low payroll, and this program does very little to help those specific businesses out. I found that this change was really surprising coming from the Democratic majority house and because many people have said flat out there's not going to be a change in the 75 percent rule because I mean after all it is called paycheck protection it's all about payroll paychecks getting people re-employed and staying on payroll so that'll be a really surprising change finally the House also plans to take up a bill to increase the transparency in the Paycheck Protection Program. This is mainly to help combat fraud and make sure funding is actually going to small businesses. There wasn't a whole lot of information on that aspect. Now on to the Senate's plan. The Senate's plan is slightly less revolutionary and really just makes two changes, but they still would be good changes. The first one would extend the deadline to apply for the loan from June 30th to the end of the year. This would allow businesses who have not reopened yet to apply at a later date and then start that whatever period they might have for forgiveness. Believe it or not, there is still money available in the second round of funding for the Paycheck Protection Program. So if you have not yet applied for your business, there's still a pretty good chance that you could secure funding and it's going to be much less of a hassle now because most businesses have already received funding. Bankers aren't going to be so overwhelmed anymore. So I really recommend applying if you are eligible to apply. The second change under the Senate would double the current eight week period for forgiveness to 16 weeks. So this one provides a slightly smaller window than the House's plan, which landed at 24 weeks. Either way, that increased window, I think, would make a huge difference. I know just increasing it to 16 weeks would make a difference for my business, and I'm sure for nearly every other business, because we all are slower, or most of us are slower this year than we were last year, payroll-wise. So this information is great and all, but what can we expect next, and which one will actually go through? Well, here is how it appears it will work. The House is likely set to pass its bill amendment tomorrow, and the Senate, who is still on vacation, is scheduled to have a pro forma meeting tomorrow in which it could pass their changes if there is a unanimous decision made. The concern is action in the Senate may be held up because senators want to attach other provisions to the legislation. That would be kind of a bummer. It might delay things a little bit. But there's still a big sense of urgency because the first people who have received loans are now nearing the end of that eight-week period. So there's a real push to get things out quickly. So I hope to see not very much argument and, hey, let me sneak this into the bill type of uh, actions because there's this need to get it figured out before the eight-week period ends for some businesses. And House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer thinks that any differences will easily be worked out because the decisions are pretty much bipartisan on this, wanting to extend the period especially. The Senate could also take up the House pass measures next week if they don't come to an agreement on their proposal tomorrow, which as a small business owner, that would be the one that I prefer, especially with that 25% provision. Um, I know that would help out my business a little bit more, but I'd be perfectly happy with either one. This is all I have on Paycheck Protection News for today. I hope to bring some more exciting updates tomorrow regarding this program after the pro forma meeting. My fingers are crossed that we have some really good news. All right, now is when I'm going to do a really short plug for Webull. If you want to plan out your future, start building a portfolio, get an IRA, or use a stock simulator, check out the Webull app. You can use my link in the description and you'll receive two completely free stocks in your account value between $12 and $1,400 once you deposit $100 into your account. And you'll help out this channel, which I would appreciate so very much. And while we're on this topic, here's a situation where you shouldn't get the Webull app. No one promoting this is going to say this, but don't make investments right now if you have debt with an interest rate over around like 8% because you're probably not going to get a return bigger than that. If you have debt at a high interest rate, pay off your debt first before investing. No, it's not as exciting as investing, 
but it's actually going to be a smarter use of your money in most cases because it's just simply going to be a better return on your money. I'd rather you not use my referral code and get out of debt first. For everyone else, check out Webull. Use my code if you want to. Until next time, I'd like to thank you for watching and I hope you have a profitable day.